I thought probably one of the uh, best ways that I could honor all the mothers here today is to pray for your children. So, and I'm obviously not going to remember all the names of all your children. So I'm simply going to, uh, when I point to you, tell us the names of your children. Okay, we'll start with Debbie. Caitlin. Helena. Debbie, Gary, Sarah. We're getting the children, children-in-law and grandchildren. <laughs> all right, Colleen. Okay, Yvonne? All right. Kathy, Newton? Names of your children. Sindel? Lucy? All right. Am I, are there any two short mothers that I'm missing? Okay. Mary? I miss anybody. All right, let's pray. Okay, we good? Or as I used to say at my home church, are all hearts clear? All right, Lord, I'll never remember the names of all of uh, these kids, but I know that. Uh, their mothers, their grandmas, their great-grandmas hold them very near and dear to their hearts. I pray for their protection, for their safety, for their health and well-being. But most of all, I pray that if they do not yet know you as their Savior, they would come to know you. You would open their hearts to the light of the gospel, and they would commit themselves fully to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, please have a seat. As Fred reads uh, two scriptures, one from Exodus and one from Leviticus. Exodus 20, 12. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Leviticus 29. If anyone curses his father or mother, he must be put to death. He has cursed his father or his mother, and his blood will be on his own head. Okay, sing along if you know it. M is for the million things she gave me. O means only that she's growing old. T is for the tears she shed to save me. H is for her heart of purest gold. E is for her eyes with love light shining. R is right and right she'll always be. You know the last part. Put them all together, they spell mother, a word that means the world to me. We've got some uh, tributes that we're going to read in a little bit. Uh, if you have been working on yours, I'll collect it in a few minutes. And some of you may be brave enough to want to come forward and speak. And so we're going to give you that opportunity also. All right? So I'm going to set this up. And when the time comes, that will be where you come to, okay? Mother's Day uh, can be a tough day for preachers 
because we've got lots of different kinds of people in here, obviously. Uh, you came in with different expectations for Mother's Day. Uh, I could do a sermon telling you to honor your mothers. I could do a sermon challenging you mothers to do better. Um, I could uh, try and do a sermon to comfort you mothers. Uh, but here's one thing I know for sure. That no matter what I do, somebody's going to walk out feeling bad or unhappy and I'll get an email or a phone call or somebody will say something on the way out. It's not my intention to call up bad memories for you. It's not my intention to make you feel inadequate. Uh, it is my intention to do the simple thing today and honor mothers. Now this is my sixth Mother's Day that I have not had to buy a gift for my mother. Um, so I know what it's like to lose your mom. Your mother may be gone and you may have bad memories of her or she may still be alive and you may have bad memories growing up. I don't think that excuses you from honoring your mother. And honoring her may simply be not talking bad about her. You may have had a wonderful mother. The way to honor her may be to extol her virtues and take every opportunity to tell others about it. But here is the bottom line for me, and I tend to be a simple guy. The Bible says to do it. It doesn't say honor your mother if. It says honor your mother. And that's what I want to do this morning. If your mother is living, there are lots of ways you can honor her. And if she's close by, um, obviously, I would encourage you very much to see her. Uh, if she's too far away I, and she's living, I encourage you to call her. Um, it used to be true, I can't imagine it's any different, that Mother's Day was the number one day for long distance phone calls out of the year. Father's Day is the number one day for long distance collect phone calls. <laughs> okay? So what I want to do is, uh, like I said, um, obey what it says in the Bible and honor mothers, all right? Now, like I said, your mother may be gone, like mine, uh, but I still find ways to honor my mother, and one is two ways. Uh, I grew up, even though my mother smoked, she told me over and over and over and over again, don't smoke. In fact, she told me, if I ever catch you with a cigarette, I'll make you eat the whole pack. Number one, I believed her <laughs> that she would do that, okay? But she was obviously a uh, victim to a habit that she couldn't give up. She eventually did, thankfully. Um, but there's something she did not want, to, want me to follow in her footsteps on, okay? So one of the ways I honor my mother, um, and of course, the fact that I'm a Christian has something to do with this. Um, but honestly, even if I wasn't a Christian, I wouldn't be a smoker, Okay? Secondly, uh, my mother grew up with an alcoholic father who used to chase my grandma around with a shotgun and say he was going to kill her. And so my mother knew how horrible it was to grow up with an alcoholic father. And she told me, don't drink, don't drink. I don't want to ever catch you with alcohol. Don't ever drink, not one sip alcohol. I honor my mother by not drinking. And again, that has implications because I'm a Christian, okay? It's not a lifestyle that I want to do or have my children or grandchildren see me doing. But even apart from being, if I was not a Christian, I wouldn't drink. And the reason is I want to honor my mother. She told me not to. I loved my mother, and I wanted to please her and not disappoint her. Although I have to admit, and my wife can verify this, I think in my mother's eyes I could do no wrong. All right, verification from the woman who never lies, okay? Now, I definitely support a day to honor mothers, all right? Obviously. But if you're going to follow the biblical command to honor your mother, it's more than just a day. It's more than just a bouquet of flowers. It's more than just we'll make dinner this time. 
It's more than just whatever gift you would give her. It's about putting into practice the good things that she taught. If you are grown up and out of the house, it's still listening to her advice. And if you're still at home and you aren't supporting yourself yet, then it's what I said to the kids. You want to honor your mother? Do what she asks you to do the first time she asks you. Honoring your mother is not one day out of the year command. It's an every day of every year. Now, one of the things that I think about sometimes is the conclusions that people come to about my mother when they meet me. Ah, you're Charlotte Moore's son, huh? And you know people come to conclusions. You know they make judgments. You know they do. They do. Now, like a lot of boys, uh, as I grew up, I became less and less attached to my mother and uh, more attached to my father. My dad became my hero, my, mo <coughs> excuse me, my role model, and my advisor. I remember once, I think every boy does this at some point. I was maybe four or five years old, I don't remember. But I said to my mother, I want to marry you when I grow up. I think every little boy thinks that at some point. My mother was so pretty and kind to me. I think she did the best thing any mother could do. You know what she said? Okay. <laughs> of course, I outgrew that. Um, but my mother to me, kind of like what Abraham Lincoln said, I guess, all that, I, all that I am or ever hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. Now, the thing too is, you know, we honor our mothers, we love our mothers, but I also know that when I chose to follow God's leading into the ministry, I knew she would be both proud of me for going into a noble profession, but I also knew I would be breaking her heart because here's what would happen. There was little chance that I was going to get appointed to the church that I grew up in, and I don't think I'd want to be. I don't think I could go pastor a church where all the old people come up and say, so nice to have little Donnie Moore as our pastor. <clears throat> that wouldn't have worked, okay? And so my first church was about 60 miles away from home, and then 100 miles away from home, and then over 200 miles away from home. And... Not only was I getting, as I followed God's leading in my life, getting further and further away from her, I was also taking some of her grandchildren away from her. But I had to follow Luke 14, 26, where it says if you're going to be a true follower of Jesus, you have to love him more than your mother or your father or anybody else in your family, and if necessary, Leave them behind. And that's what I did. And you know, as I kind of think about it, I think maybe that was the best way to honor her, was to become a man who loves God more than any other, even her. So the question today is not, how will you honor your mother today? The question is, how will you honor her tomorrow? And the next day, and the next day, and every day after that. Now, I want to give you the opportunity today, if you want to come up and speak. Some of you have given me these. Uh, does anybody else have one of these they want to give me to read? We have some? Okay. I'll come and get them. Yes, you're honoring your mother. Well, what'd you do? Oh, you don't have to tell us. 
<laughs> I had a blood clot explode oh, in my toe. Okay. Um, well, this is a poem to my mother um, for Mother's Day. She's a lovely woman. Um, I miss her. She taught me to love unconditionally. Um, I miss her very much. So here's my poem to her. My thoughts return to days gone by seeing your lovely face. Though years are gone and I have aged, your love I can't replace. The very thing that helps me be a woman of grace and strength is how I've learned your lessons taught and live them day by day. Mother dear, it seems sometimes you're a faded memory, but the truth is clear, you're living on, and that would be through me. And that's for my mother, Mary Diane Johnson. Thank you. on the mic because YouTube watchers around the world will be able to hear you and see your face. Go to the mic, please. My mother was an extraordinary woman, and I'm sure that every man says that, at one time or another at least. Uh, my father was married, and his wife died in childbirth. And it was a few years, four or five years later, before he got married again. And he married my mother, who had never been married. She was a school teacher. And their marriage <clears throat> was one that uh, produced 11 children. And 11 children love each other, yet today, <laughs> and love her. And she is, was just an extraordinary woman. And when I was a youngster, I told all my buddies that she brainwashed me. That was in the early days of brainwashing. And I, I said, uh, she's brainwashed me. Not only my mother, my dad brainwashed me. I knew when I did something wrong that I was just as black as coal. I knew that. <laughs> Nobody had to tell me. All I knew from my parents was love. And I find it easy to love people and very hard not to. And I, I just uh, have nothing but thanksgiving for the mother I had and the father. This is Mother's Day, but I had a great father, too. I want to say that. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else anxious to speak in front of everyone? Anytime I do this, I'm always reminded of what Jerry Seinfeld said. Number one fear that people have is public speaking. The number two fear is dying. So remember, the next time you're at a funeral, most people there would rather be in the casket than giving the eulogy. <laughs> All right? Okay, I have some to read. This is from Preston Loncar. He says, my mommy is so pretty, nice, playful, and funny. I love her. This is from Taylor. My mom is the most beautiful and nicest mom ever. This is from uh, Millie. My mother was an angel, 12 children. We are all different. She didn't have a modern stove, no sweeper. She baked in her iron stove, never burnt the cookies or the bread, 10 loaves on the cupboard. I like bread, Millie says. <laughs> I love the smell of bread baking. Me too. Me too. Andrew, I feel amazing when you compliment me and you are one of the nicest people I know. My mother, Mary, is the greatest role model anyone could ask for. 
I strive every day to be just like her. She is kind, loving, sincere, beautiful, hardworking, and most of all, selfless. We love her so much. From Christian Joe Preston, Balin, Camden, and Chloe. Praise God, my mother was a Christian mother who brought me to church as a baby. She had 10 children and she was faithful to the Lord. I know I will see her someday in heaven and my father from Helena. I have to add this to that. Yes. We didn't have a car company, and as soon as rain or snow, we were going to church. And how many, oh, 10 children you said? Yep, 10 children. My mother is the most amazing woman in the world. She is always kind, caring, and loving to everyone. We appreciate everything you do for all your children and grandchildren. I can always count on you to be there for me. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you from Gretchen. I, I am thankful for a wonderful Christian mother who prays for me, prayed for me and encouraged me, and there's no name on this. Who wrote that one? Ah, okay, Deb. Anybody else have one you want me to read? You do? All right, bring it up, or do you want to read it yourself? No, okay. Anybody else? All right. From Brittany, obviously, my mom is wonderful. She's so nice. She's the best mom ever. I am so lucky to have her as a mom. All right, the last thing I want to do before we sing our last hymn, I want all the kids to come back up. And the first thing I want you to do is take and give your mother a flower. And your mother might end up with more than one flower. She got more than one kid here, but that's all right. Okay? So, first of all, take a pl one flower and give it to your mother. Okay? Take a flower and give it to your mother. All right? The more kids your mother has here, the more flowers we got to pick them up. Are you picking them up? All right? Okay, everybody has one now? Good. All right, thank you. All right, kids, you can go back and sit down.